Diane in Denmark here and ra 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 it is Thursday or as we call it here in Denmark uh, Lille Freide, uh, Little Friday. Let me just pop my pom poms down uh, and we are on to, drum roll please, day number 32 of our 40 day habit challenge. We're all still going strong with that. We're still going strong like in, the, in small baby steps. We're, we're, we're just taking a tiny tiny uh, change to a day and, and, and making it a habit um, and I've got two check-ins with you today I'm, I'm working on two things for my my daily habit uh, one is exercise you know I'm either doing a seven minute strength app or I'm doing a 15 minute run today will be the run uh, and my other thing is decluttering just decluttering daily not having to look for you know a whole big bag of stuff because you know I, I've been with uh, doing Flying Lady for so many years that I really have eliminated the clutter, you know the big the big clutter that's kind of gets in your face. But I love the Flying Lady system of just always being aware of the of, of clutter in your home. That that's why we work through the zones, uh, you know, also for zone cleaning because you're you're. You're constantly aware of, of the situation. Instead of kind of shutting your eyes and saying, oh, you know, it, it's uh, uh, th this room is all right and ignoring the other room, we're kind of moving through all the zones so we don't forget about anything. But on the other hand, we're kind of able to stand back, you know, like with the weekly home blessing hour and just keeping the, the main house on track and uh, up to date. Anyway, to keep you up to date with what I'm decluttering, I've got um, a couple of items today. Uh, one is from Zone 4, the bedroom, uh, master bedroom, and I've got a top here that, now, Vibeka handed this one on to me, and I was thinking, would I use it, wouldn't I use it, and it's just too dull for me. I, I do like polka dots, you know, I love polka dots, uh, but the navy is too dark, and I don't really like the kind of brownie colour, and I held on to it for a while thinking, well, maybe I would use it, I'm, I'm not going to be wearing it, and... What I do in my um, wardrobe, as you've seen, is when I hang up things, you know, I've got things on the hanger, not, not, the, not the, the flocked uh, velvet hangers, you, you've heard enough about those, and I, I like the wooden ones from Ikea or the, the smaller plastic ones. When I hang things in my wardrobe, uh, my wardrobe uh, is towards the wall here, right? Imagine this, this is me opening the wardrobe. I hang them this way, Okay, do you see, like with the open, there you are, uh, with the open end of the hanger like that, anything that, you know, when I, when I first get items, I put them into the wardrobe like that, then I can see if I'm actually wearing the things. Once I've worn the item, like, you know, like uh, this dress, <laughs> which you've seen a lot of times, I wear it a lot, when, when that goes back into the wardrobe, it goes that way, and then I can immediately see what I'm wearing and what I'm not wearing. And it also helps me, you know, when I'm choosing my outfit, uh, and, and I lay out my outfit for the next day when I'm putting away laundry in the morning as part of my laundry routine. I can see the items that I'm not wearing, and it also helps me say, oh, you know, well, let me try and wear it. And if I keep kind of jumping over and not wearing it, there's a reason for it. Uh, and, and I notice with this one, I've been procrastinating on it, but hey, procrastination no longer rules uh, my head. So, so this one is going to the close swap party. And as I said here, also, I have a bag in the bottom of my wardrobe so that if I find things like that and, you know, I keep on jumping over and saying, no, I won't wear it today, I won't wear it today, uh, and I can just, the item is clean, I can just fold it up nicely and put it in the bag for the clothes swap party and I'm ready to go. So that's one item for today. So you may want to think about that when you're putting away your laundry this week. Are there things, uh, you know, in, in your wardrobe that you're, you haven't worn for a long time, they don't suit you? Perhaps they need repaired, you know, are you actually going to repair them? I mean, if not, let's uh, make a decision on it. And the other thing, which I also caught myself uh, kind of procrastinating on, on making a decision on, um, you know, my, I love my books. I don't need to keep books. Uh, my husband and my daughter, they like to keep books and reread them. I read books once and then, you know, pass them on to somebody else. And most of my books I get from the library. And I'll tell you in a wee minute what, uh, my, my, what, what I'm reading from the library at the moment. Oh, here we are, here's my little pal. Anyway, here's a book that I picked up. Now, I picked up this one. Um, I, I never buy books, unless it's my favorite authors. And even then I get them often from the library. Um, this is one that I picked up at the book exchange. 
uh, you know, we have these free book exchange uh, posts here in, in, our, in our local council. They're kind of open 24 hours a day and they've got uh, solar panels on the top. And you can just open the door, pop in books that you don't want and take others or take one and not necessarily put one in. I picked this one up and I'm, I think I showed you this uh, on a video a long time ago. And I have read some of Alexander McCall Smith. He's not my favourite author and there's just, it's not my... There's not enough humour in the books and uh, also some of the characters I find really dull and I want, uh, what's it, her name is Isabel and I want to shake her sometimes. Anyway, I've read some of them and I saw this one I thought, well, you know, and then the other day I caught myself saying, well, maybe I should take it to our Swedish summer house and I can leave it there in case I'm looking for something. And then I thought, oh, Diane, you are... You, you know, I, I was just kind of moving things from one place to another. Now that isn't decluttering. You know, if you're just kind of moving stuff from one place to another, it's not decluttering. And I said to myself, you know, you've got to make a decision on this. And my decision is I'm not going to read this book. I've got, you know, if I'm at the Swedish summer house, either I've got a book with me or I've got, uh, I've got my whole Montalbano collection there that I like to occasionally reread. And I've got a couple of Jeeves over there as well. So this one, and I'm going to make the decision on it today. And this one is uh, going into the bag for the uh, clothes swap party because I know some of the ladies uh, like Alexander McCall Smith. So just think about that. Have you been kind of moving stuff from one area to another um, and, and not actually making a decision on things? You know, we've got to, we've got to uh, stop that procrastination and actually make the decision. The, the same as I mentioned to you, you know, if you've got that... Um, and there's some kind of chair in, in your bedroom and you're just kind of piling clothes on it because you're not making the decision about whether it needs washed or aired uh, or taken in or taken out. Uh, so, so let's make a decision on these things. Um, and just to give you a quick run through of what I got from the library, I made a video about our library just the other day. I did on the next one because I love our local library. Um, and, and I know a lot of you enjoyed seeing all the prams outside in the strollers. For us, that's just kind of a, a normal thing here. You, you know, um, babies, they sleep outside uh, during the day, even like even when it's down to like zero degrees, what's that, um, 28F. Um, you know, as long as they're well wrapped up and they're not ill, um, it, it's really healthy for the babies to get some fresh air, you know, instead of uh, sleeping inside. Anyway, more, more on that and another time, because I know you'll all be like, <gasps> Letting babies sleep outside, how can you do? <clears throat> you know, in Scandinavia, and, and also when I was a baby in, in Scotland, people would, uh, you know, let their babies sleep outside. I'm not sure if that's still the case now, but in Scandinavia, yeah, it's uh, just a normal thing. And many people will actually have an extra pram uh, that goes out on their balcony where the uh, baby sleeps. So they were, anyway, I'll, as I said, we'll get into that another time, because I know you'll all be shocked and uh, ringing the authorities about child abuse and stuff. Anyway, uh, what I got from the library, to get back to that, uh, I got another Ellie Griffith, and I really love her series. These are actually also available in our library in Danish. Somebody asked me, um, on the library video that I made, uh, was it common to have uh, English books? Uh, I mean, these are all in English from our library. Uh, yes, because Scandinavia, uh, sorry, Denmark, uh, the population is like five and a half million, six million. So uh, the market for Danish books is very, very small. You know, it's costly uh, to make uh, translations of things. So the Danes, they kind of grew up uh, reading English books or German books because those are, you know, immediately available. Um, and, and a lot, you know, if, if you're at school or university, a lot of the teaching materials are in English because, you know, it would just be too costly to have them translated into Danish. So uh, anyway, I got Ellie Griffiths. And uh, for those of you who are interested, she, I think she's actually brought out a kid's book. Um, and, and, and I haven't looked into it because my daughter is too old to be reading that. Um, but you might want to check her out. I really love her, all her series. I uh, also picked up, oh, this is one that I need to take back to the library, um, the Singaporean uh, mystery. Uh, it, it was okay. It wasn't, wasn't great. Uh, and this is one, I haven't started yet, but this is also from the library. Um, it's part of a series from um, British, the, Brit the British Library, Crime Classics. And these are books that were maybe written in the 20s and 30s, and they're republishing them. And some of them have been really good. Some of them, you can feel that they're very 
of their time. Uh, but this this is another one, and um, it's brand new live. But look at that, 8th of February, this one came into our library, so I'm, I'm the first one to read it. So I picked up that one, uh, and I also found this magazine, which I hadn't seen before, called The Simple Things. Now, I found it a bit kind of forced. It's, it's a bit like a kind of hygge uh, magazine, uh, but it's, it's nice and a kind of cosy read. Not something I would ever uh, buy or subscribe to, but uh, we get it free in our library, so I'm having a wee uh, look through those. But you can see it's kind of, you know, the whole kind of... Uh, Danish concept of hygge, of cosiness, and... You've got buildings, traditions, um, oh, what else? Uh, interiors, uh, food, uh, drink, and oh, here we are. Hold on, let me just show you something here. And kind of, oh, uh, nice, oh, <laughs> nice things to look at. So, kind of soothing, soothing stuff. So, that's quite fun to read. Um, and what else? Oh, and uh, just because we, we like to, and I like to hear what you're watching on TV or reading. Um, I saw uh, just this morning the trailer for the new series of Tra Stranger Things. Now I don't know if you watch. Uh, I don't know if you have Netflix. Uh, we we basically just have the uh, Danish channels here and, and Netflix, and we loved, absolutely loved Stranger Things one and two. And because uh, it's all kind of set in the 80s, and I'm not a big fan of the 80s, but I love the 80s music. The music is really good in it, and it's quite kind of spooky, and uh, we really enjoyed that. And the new Stranger Things is coming out, if, if I remember rightly, in, in July. I think it's the 4th of July. It's all uh, getting going again. So I'm really looking forward to that. I saw the trailer for it, and ooh, spooky again. Um, and what we have just <laughs> finished watching. Uh, my daughter and I are really into, you know, Japan, and she found, and, and I, you know me, I love uh, Iron Man, Avengers stuff, and she found something on Netflix, and it was called Ip Man, and it's like, you know, like Iron Man, but Ip Man, and it's uh, Donnie Yen, who was in the Star Wars Rogue One. I really loved him in that, and I thought, oh, he was a really good actor, and I've kind of been looking for other stuff he's done. Anyway, my daughter came across these kind of uh, superhero movies, which was called Ip Man, about, uh, and it's actually based on a, a true story of somebody who's a martial arts teacher, and, and anyway, you can have a look, and we were just fascinated, so we, we watched Ip Man 1, Ip Man 2, and Ip Man 3, and then my husband said, oh, have you seen this, gets really good reviews, and it was a Korean zombie series, also on Netflix, because I've told you that we love uh, the film Train to Busan <laughs> with, the, with the zombies. That is a fantastic movie. And I'm not a, a zombie person, but uh, the Train to Busan, you're kind of, <gasps> and then you're ah, laughing, and then you're kind of crying, and it, it's like a roller coaster uh, of emotions watching that film. Anyway, <laughs> to get back to what I was saying, uh, my husband said, oh, have you seen this? Gets really good reviews. And it's called Kingdom. And it's another zombie thing, and it's uh, set in medieval times in uh, Korea. Uh, and I won't tell you too much about it, but it's kind of visually stunning. And I'll just say there's a lot of horses in it, and a lot of uh, beautiful palaces, and really bad people, and uh, the goodies, and the zombies, and a lot of men in different hats. So I won't say any more, but the hats are just fantastic. Like, what is hat is he wearing now? And the beautiful costume. So anyway, we, my, my daughter and I kind of uh, binged watched that series over uh, the last week or so. Uh, and there were only six episodes, but there is a new, of course, season coming. So we'll have like uh, season 16 of Kingdom, just like with The Walking Dead. Anyway, uh, I, I better get on with my day. It's uh, Thursday in Fly Lady Land, which is Erin Day. I've changed my Erin Day to another uh, day of the week. Normally now I do my errands on Monday and Tuesday. So my errands are done. Um, and I did my uh, procrastination task uh, yesterday, which was basically just putting out the rubbish for uh, collection this morning, and I could hear them in this morning, they've collected. So, uh, I'm going to get on with my day. I hope you have a fantastic Thursday, little Friday, little Friday, and um, I'll see you tomorrow for day 33. So just keep going out there, and um, that's about it. Oh, and 
Weather-wise, I know a lot of you in the States, you, you're now into spring, you celebrated the start of spring yesterday. We started spring on the 1st of uh, March here in Denmark. And the weather's looking pretty awful, but anyway, hey ho, we make our own sunshine. So, uh, live long and prosper. May the Danish food be with you. I've got the candles going uh, this morning, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, bye for now.